okay now right you might ask okay now what what if i have if i have more more such point correspondences right so so what is what is run is right normally people use what is called a ransack okay this is not uh, the ransack right that we use in english so this stands for a random sample consensus 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 right and uh, and it's not really anything to do with homography okay ransack is a, is basically an algorithm developed developed in the in the you know cs community and you can use you can you can use it wherever you want it's supposed to be it's supposed to give you robustness against outliers okay so what it basically means is you know if you have if you have if you have you know data points and if you want to kind of fit some kind of a model right so and if there are if there are if there are outliers in that particular particular say data points that you have there are outliers right and then you want to kind of be aware of the outliers and you want to say come up with some kind of a robust model fitting then ransack you can use I and mean, we'll show how you can use it in a homography setting but uh, you know this is not uh, developed for homography or anything okay but then people in people that uh, that do computer vision use ransack in order to be able to arrive at uh, at, at a robust homography more so because when you when you do this point correspondence is right if you if you just take all of them see one way to do would be to simply take all of them and then right in which case you will get ah right you know so so suppose you were to build this matrix ah and suppose this is some m cross 9 where where right m is uh, m is a number much larger than 8 so let's say i have got 40 point correspondences or 50 point correspondences i can just put them all right as rows but if you directly solve for this if some of those point correspondences are wrong right which can happen right because it's only some algorithm that is trying to figure out which point has gone where suppose it tells you a wrong correspondence then it can actually completely fail your homography estimation your your you know h will kind of say take a hit okay, if there are outliers so the idea is that idea is that you find as many shift features as you can let the algorithm that shift code let it run let it uh, let it kind of let it sort of say return to you as many features as it can find out of those right you want to find out find out uh, homography in a kind of robust way rather than throwing all of them into some ah and trying to solve for you know solve for some uh, so ideally right you la- you'll ask for that h such that norm of ah is as small as possible because you may not even be able to satisfy ah equal to 0 so you'll ask for some h such that norm of ah is as small as possible but but then one actually asks that eventually but not but not straight away one first accumulates all the inliers now that accumulation of inliers is actually typically done through ransack right now i let me just write down and at this point of time do you have any this one do you have anything to ask okay now this is used to fit okay parameters of a model parameters of a model in the presence of outliers out <coughs> presence of out layers okay and uh, let me just write down a few points okay so what is also does is ransack uses minimum number of points uses minimum okay, minimum number of points to actually complete the model to complete the model so now the way the way it works here is see for example right, we know that in our case to compute a homography the minimum num- number that i need are four point correspondences right so the way this 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 algorithm works is this is something that you will actually implement let me just let me just write down the steps so what you will do is you will pick any four four point correspondences at, at random okay that's why it's called random sample consensus right so four pick any four any four point correspondences and solve for h and solve for h okay so this you will do using a null of a uh, null of a a is that a is that a is that matrix that had those spatial coordinates right which you know because somebody has already told you what those point correspondences are so the shift has told you what four points so you just pick them and then 
and you solve for null f. Now, what you do is from this you get your h, right? Now, use this h, use this h to calculate. H to calculate, let us say, and I'm going to use some funny sort of a notation here, but you'll uh, you'll you'll know why. So xi double dash, yi double dash, and some let's say c. Okay, when h is acted upon upon <coughs> xi, yi one for the remaining points. So what this means is. If you had m points, then m minus 4, on those you apply this h, okay. That is why you have a consensus. A consensus means what? Agreement, right? So, so, so you are trying to see whether the other points are agreeable to this homography or not for the, the remaining points. Remaining means the n minus 4 or whatever, right? Other than excluding these four guys. Now, what do you do? Get the, get the image coordinates as, because, because still in the homogeneous form get the image coordinates as xi double dash by c. Let us call this, I am calling this as xi triple dash. Hopefully, there is no xi four dash and yi triple dash is equal to yi double dash upon c. Then what do you do? You find again Okay, this root of xi minus xi triple dash square plus yi minus yi triple dash square. See, what this actually means is the following, right? What it is saying is there is somebody that has already told that for uh, that for this xi yi, right? Wait a minute. Oh, this should be xi dash. Okay, that's what I was wondering. It should be xi dash and y8 and not xi. So, see, your shift code has already told that xi matches with xi dash, right? xi goes to xi dash, yi goes to yi dash. Now, you have actually computed some homography and now on the remaining points, you are applying h on xi. And, and let us say, right, I mean, you know, so, so when h acts on it, it did not give you back xi dash. It will give you something, it could give you something else, xi triple dash, yi triple dash. You are trying to see whether, whether you are landing close enough to where the shift said this point matches. Are you able to see that? So, it is like saying that you have this image, okay, and shift has said that, let me you know, give some color here. So, let us say that shift says that this point matches with that. Now, you have computed homography from some other four guys, right? I mean, we have not used this at all. We have used this, this and something else, right? So, we have used these four points to compute our edge. Now, we, we want to know whether this edge is agreeable for the other points or not. So, what we are doing is we are applying edge on this guy, which is your x i y i. It will take it somewhere, but no, it could, okay? So, so right, what will happen? What will happen is it could land somewhere around this point. We hope it will, we hope it will land on x i dash y i dash, which is what our shift has said it should be. But then this homography need not be the right one. We do not know which is the correct one. Right. So, what will happen? It will land somewhere near xi dash y a dash. So, that is that coordinate xi triple dash y a triple dash, where the homography takes it. The shift says it is this, the homography power probably says it is going there. So, now we are trying to find out how far away these two points are and as long as these two points are close enough, you say that, okay, right, this, this point, uh, this homography is in agreement for that point and then you start incrementing the consensus set. So, the consensus is like, how many points are you know are in in line with this homography right that's what you so then what do you do uh, then if okay now let's call this as epsilon okay let's say that uh, let's say this is equal to some epsilon then if again right there will be some kind of hum heuristics here you will have to choose a threshold Okay, and uh, typically this will be like 5 pixels or something normally, okay, but it can change. Okay, this is in pixels. This is not some intensity, right? We are not going to looking at intensities. We are looking at where the coordinate is going in pixels, then increment the consensus set. Then increment the consensus, consensus set. Then what do you do? If the total number
the total number of consensus points of consensus points is greater than a threshold again that will be a threshold that that uh, that you have to kind of say decide people typically think 80 percent is okay but again you know this can change it's greater than a certain threshold to be chosen by you so in that sense right all of you need not arrive at the same answer because so somebody might have used 70 percent thresholding somebody might have said 80 percent right so a certain threshold so stop and uh, go to 8 what is that go to go to the last step go to the last step else else so suppose suppose you have still not uh, so right so for that homography right you have not been able to reach this kind of a threshold so what do you do else continue for a fixed number of iterations that means now you pick another another you know four point correspondences computer homography run okay else continue for a fixed number of iterations number of iterations so so right normally what basically people will do is since they want to since they don't want to be trying out everything exhaustively right they just fix a fix a certain number of iterations till which they will wait either the either the iterations will get over so you come out or you set a set or uh, no at some homography you may be able to meet the consensus uh, consensus threshold and then you come out and choose the h with max okay that that anyway right you would have done here itself okay whenever whenever you you know whenever your consensus consensus uh, whenever you reach the consensus thing, you will anyway come out. If not, you just continue for a fixed number of iterations. If you are never able to get that consensus, it's okay. You just choose the one with the maximum consensus. Choose the H I mean, among those. So, none of them has been able to meet your criterion of 80 percent, let us say. But among those, whichever gave you the maximum consensus, let us say you got 75 with something, 75 percent, just take that. H with maximum consensus. maximum consensus. Now, right, so, you know, in some place, right, they will simply say that what you can do is, now, whichever H gave you the consensus that was maximum, right, you can simply use that H. That means what that you, that H was computed with only four correspondences, right, you can use that. But then you might ask, when there are so many other inliers sitting, now, wh what are the inliers? Those are the other points, right, that are actually sitting in that set that we know have come reasonably close to their feature correspondences. So, you could actually use all of them, right? Because now you know that they are all inliers. Now, you, you do not have any outliers sitting there because those are all, those all belong to an inlier set now. So, what is normally done is you do not want to throw them away. So, we will recompute your homography using all the points that are inliers, okay? not all the points, right? If you had 50 points, maybe for this homography, you got about, you see, 20, uh, let us say, say, whatever, uh, no, depending 80 percent, let us say, that means you got 40 points. So, those 40 points will be the only ones that will be used to recompute our homography, not all 50 because you got outliers sitting there outside of this set, right. So, what you will do? So, you will do A, right. Uh, let us say you got some M number of inliers. So, so this is only inliers, okay. So, okay. Now, let me write, when I mean, you can either, let me write here, you can either use a computed H. Computed H by which we mean only with those four correspondences or as is, right? Or use all the all the you know, inliers. That is the consensus set. Consensus set. In order to, to rederive H, to rederive. I mean it may not matter so much, but you know. We should know that such a thing is possible. Okay, in which case, right? You will do a m cross n. Okay, multiply it m cross nine by h, where only in layers, and we know that m is probably you know much much larger than eight. Okay, now if if let's say you know, see this is all assuming that a has still some noise and so on. Uh, see, there may still be some noise. These may be in layers, but it doesn't mean that everything is exact, right? Because you still allowed for some sort of a threshold. You still said that you know, as long as you are you within within a radius, you are okay. So that means, right? What can happen is this A can still, uh, still right, end up end up with a rank nine. Yeah, A can have a rank nine because because of noise in noise in your see data. 
If it so happens that all of your data is completely clean, then it doesn't matter whether you use 8 or whether you use more, right? A will have rank 8 and there's only one homography. But normally, right, A will have some noise in it, right? Nothing is exact. So what you do is you look for an H such that norm of AH is as small as possible. Okay, let's put it this as square, right? So you want to pick an H such that norm AH is as small as possible because, you know, you, you may not be able to get AH equal to 0. So the next best is look for a norm AH such that it is as small as possible, right? Now, which is equal to saying that you're looking at something like AH. Okay, I wrote here SVD, right? Now, single value decomposition, I'm sure you've all done. We will anyway do when we do we made transforms, but we just need a little of that now. So, I'll just introduce that. So, AH transpose AH, right? That's what you're looking for in H such that, such that this number, number is as small as possible. And this is nothing but H transpose A transpose AH. Okay, now A we know is not really square, right? A is, A is actually a rectangular matrix. So, when you have a rectangular matrix, you can, you know that singular value decomposition allows you to, you know, decompose a rectangular matrix in terms of what are called, what are called unitary matrices and sort of, uh, you know, sort of a rectangular, rectangular, it's not strictly diagonal, right? So, you get some like U sigma V transpose. So this is the standard sort of notation that people use for, for SVD. So, what this means is that U is, uh, U is such that, you know, if A is complex and all, you know, U has to be U, U Hermitian, all you will talk about. Let's leave all that. Let's simply say that U, U transpose is equal to U transpose U is equal to identity. Okay. And, uh, and of course, in this case, right, the dimensions will change. M, U will be M cross M. Okay. Uh, then V is going to be 9 cross 9. And M sigma is going to be M cross 9. So, sigma is like almost diagonal matrix, but except that it's not square. It's like M cross 9 and uh, it has what are called singular values. That's why we call it a singular value decomposition, right? We'll talk about it later, okay? Uh, but just the, the way people use it to compute homography is uh, because singular value, you know, SVD is so powerful, it will keep on coming, right? There are so many applications of it. This is just one application. And of course, similarly, V, v transposes V transpose V is equal to identity. Of course, this I is of a different dimension. This is like M cross M. This is 9 cross 9, right? So, the two i's are not the same and uv transpose need not be identity and so on. This is u is orthogonal, v is orthogonal, okay? And so, therefore, right, if you look at this a transpose a that we have here, we can use singular value decomposition to our, to our advantage now. So, a transpose a. So, a transpose a will then equivalently yield you v sigma transpose u transpose, right? And then a, which is u sigma v transpose. Now, u transpose u, I told you, is identity. So, you'll end up with v sigma transpose sigma v transpose. And sigma transpose is what? 9 cross. So, this whole thing is 9 cross 9. Correct? Which is what it should be because a transpose is 9 cross m. So, 9 cross m, m cross 9, 9 cross 9. Right? So, the whole thing will be 9 cross 9. v is also 9 cross 9. So, you can think of V as consisting of these columns, right? Each is each, right? Each column is like, it has a length 9. So, now what you do is, right? You want to, you want to kind of pick an H such that this norm is as small as possible, right? So, so, so in order to do that, what do you do? You pick and, and you know, yeah, one more thing I should tell you that let's assume that, right, these are arranged in an order in terms of the significance of the, of their singular values. That means the last, let's say, right, this guy has the highest singular value, the next highest, the next highest, and the last guy has the lowest singular value, okay, in the sense that whatever is that, you know, singular value is de denoted by sigma 1, sigma 2. So, you're looking at sigma 9, and we are saying that sigma, corresponding to sigma 9, there is a ninth column in B. So, this is like ordered, okay. So, now, if you assume that, right, things are ordered, then what we will do is, let's pick the, uh, what do you call, let's pick the ninth uh, Now pick the pick the ninth column, column, not row, column of V to be H. Why? Suppose you do, suppose you pick the ninth column of V to be H. Now go back to that norm H square. So we were here. 
at uh, H transpose. What was that? Ah, ah, V sigma. So, V sigma transpose sigma, V sigma transpose sigma, V transpose and then H. Correct? Because A transpose A is this guy now. Now, because of the fact that V transpose V is identity, correct? So, what this means is that when you when you multiply, so, so V transpose is like you can think of all these rows, right? There are 9 rows in V and you and you, you pick the ninth column of V right, to be H. So, so then what it will mean is you will get then a vector such that because V transpose V is identity that means right that means it is actually so each of those vectors is orthonormal right. So, which then means that what will you get as a, as a vector you get 0 0 0 the last entry will be 1 right. So, you will get 0 0 and the ninth <coughs> entry will turn out to be 1. Sigma transpose sigma right. So, sigma so this will be like this will be a square matrix now which values like sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square all the way up to sigma 9 square and this is all 0. So, you can think of this sigma as uh, you know sigma 1 0 0 0 0 0 sigma 1 right. So, then what will happen? So, you are multiplying yeah. So, you are multiplying what? What are you multiplying now? So, you are multiplying this diagonal guy uh, with this right. So, then then after you multiply this with this now if you multiply this with this what will you get now? It will give you another vector right which will be 0 0 0 all the way up to sigma 9 square correct. Then you are multiplying it with V which is which is a set of columns right. We said that V has 9 columns in it. Now, when you multiply a matrix like this with a vector the I mean you can look at the result as 0 times the first column plus 0 times the second column plus 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 all the way up to the last entry times the last column. So, this will give you simply a vector which is sigma 9 square the last column, but the last column was uh, what do I mean I do not know what we called it right. Well, that is that is actually that is H by the way ok that is your H No, we pick the last column as H of V. So, H transpose now what have we got now H transpose sigma 9 square H. But H transpose H is nothing but that it is again it is again orthonormal no it is simply 1 sigma 9 square is only a scalar no it can be pulled out or oh, this is not sigma 9 square. So, this is like sigma square 9 and that we know is, is, is the kind of is the is the smallest singular value ok. This, this will be the smallest if there is noise this will be the smallest non-zero singular value corresponding to this that H that you had no that was ninth column of V that will be your H. Okay. So, so that you know, that H will be such that norm of AH is the smallest right given this given the set of inliers right. So, basically this is the way this is the way one finds out the homography ok. And now that you know how to compute homography using RANSAC ok. Now, you can actually take images and you can stitch them 